My name is John Ong, and uh, I was born in 1933, uh, right in the beginning of the Depression, uh, here in Ohio. My family been in this state for seven generations. Uh, I came to Ohio State University in 1951, uh, majored in history, uh, received my bachelor's degree and master's degree simultaneously in 1954. I went on to Harvard Law School where I graduated in 1957 and more or less immediately upon graduation from law school uh, two interesting things happened to me. First I was married and second shortly thereafter I went into the Army. Uh, I served in the Counterintelligence Corps for a while and then received a commission in the Judge Advocate General's Corps and uh, when I emerged from four years of active duty, uh, I went to work for the B.F. Goodrich Company, which was headquartered in those days in Akron, Ohio. And uh, that was it. For 36 years, I was at Goodrich. The last 18 of those years, I was the chairman and chief executive officer. And then I retired in 1997, uh, just short of my 65th birthday. And. Uh, my uh, wife told me that I had lost my focus. Uh, I had always been focused on my job at Goodrich, and now I was serving on various corporate boards. And as she said it, anybody who calls you up and asks you to do something, you say yes. And so you're answering to many uh, people, and you don't have any core mission. Uh, a fellow named George W. Bush uh, solved that problem for me by asking me to go to Norway as the U.S. ambassador to the Kingdom of Norway. And I went over there at the end of 2000, uh, 2001, pardon me, and was there for four years in that capacity. Uh, I was focused. I went to Ohio State because my father had graduated here and my grandfather, who was a surgeon, my grandfather Ong, had graduated in 1904 from the Ohio Medical University, which a few years later was joined to the OSU and became the College of Medicine. Uh, so I'm sort of a third generation Ohio Stater. Uh, the first thing was, I was it was always assumed in the family by everybody, myself included, that I was going to be a lawyer. And it was also uh, concluded that the best preparation for being a lawyer was history, and so I should study history as an undergraduate and then go on to law school. Uh, now that was, uh, that's sort of my father's perspective on how this all happened. My perspective is that from the time I was a very young boy, six, seven years old, I was absolutely fascinated by history, and I read a lot, and it, there wasn't anything else that I even considered as a, as a major other than history. In my freshman year, I took a survey course in English history. It was taught by a professor named Warner Woodring. And um, he sort of spotted me, and at one point, about midway through my freshman year, he asked me to visit him in his office in University Hall, and he announced that uh, I was going to be a history major and he was going to be my advisor. And uh, so that's where it started. And he uh, indeed acted as my advisor and became uh, uh, very important in the development of my life, and almost a second father, I would say. Uh, his department, of course, then, in the 1950s, was uh, much smaller than it is. But it was a, it, it is a good department. I think it's a great department today. I had just sort of fortuitously had the opportunity to become a business executive that uh, well, while there were aspects of my legal education that were relevant to what I was doing, uh, my background studying history was actually 
more relevant than my background uh, in law and then my legal education. Uh, what I eventually over some years concluded was that history is about studying people and human institutions. And that's really what business is all about, too. It's all about people and institutions. But the fact is that, uh, that a background in the study of history is a very good way to prepare for all kinds of careers, certainly for careers in, in business. Uh, it was well known uh, as I was rising up in corporate ranks to become CEO eventually that uh, a great many of the chief executive officers of large corporations in those days, the 60s and so on, uh, had law degrees and had started out as lawyers. And that was true. But what people didn't know, but I know because I knew these people, they were my colleagues, I worked with them in the Business Roundtable and other organizations, is almost all of them had been history majors before they went to law school. I really grew up in the international part of my company. In fact, I became the president of International B.F. Goodrich when I was quite young. And so I was in charge of operations that were not located in the United States, but were located in all other parts of the world, Philippines, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Iran, Turkey, Western Europe, all well, parts of Western Europe. So when I was looking for people in the International Division, I had two closely related criteria that uh, I looked for and that I considered, well, unless the person had some peculiar technical skill of some kind, and that was language capability, not necessary, necessarily language proficiency, but the ability to learn other languages, and also um, what I'll call global sophistication. The sophistication level was a little harder to judge, but one aspect of it was a knowledge of history, because that was the first step in appreciating other parts of the world, other cultures, uh, other attitudes and, and perspectives. Uh, so I, uh, I was very careful in, uh, in uh, hiring people to uh, look at their knowledge of history. Uh, of course, one uh, good indicator of that is did they major in it in, as undergraduates? Uh, and quite a few had. It, it, it certainly is wrong to make getting a job job number one for your kid uh, because of equal importance with how well paying a job you can get. Uh, equal or perhaps more important is do you love doing your job? I've seen so many people who just spend their whole lives doing something that they either are bored by or actually dislike uh, and it's because they're afraid to move away from that. That, that job, however hateful it may be, uh, is their, their security blanket. And uh, I have uh, uh, three children, and uh, just to show you that I practice what I preach, all three of them were history majors. I had a four-year term uh, which ended uh, in uh, uh, 2010. Uh, very interesting period, very fine people uh, on that board, some with whom I'd had a past relationship, others who were strangers to me at first. But uh, it was sort of my final um, uh, give back to Ohio State to serve for those four years, and I was uh, very happy to have done it. Thank you.